can't I just can't stop. I can't be stopped anymore. So I just want to encourage anybody listening, encourage you to keep doing what you're doing because it's good. It's great and the world needs it now. Right. So. Amen to that. Amen to that, bro. Yeah. <laughs> For sure. Do it. First and foremost, I want to welcome everybody to the podcast. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Jose Alonso, born and raised in Los Angeles, California. And, uh, you know, just welcome and we appreciate you for tuning in to the One Day OC podcast. As you guys can see, we have a special guest. We have uh, Obi Rosales, uh, as he goes by the name, but his name is Josh. Um, very cool guy. Um, the way I met this guy is because I, I used to talk to one of, one of uh, my friends and I, I, had, I wanted to start a clothing brand back a few years ago. And that friend introduced me to go with RG Printing. So I did go to RG Printing, and that's when I met Josh. And he made the shirts um, of a brand that I had called Global Dreamers. And we just stayed connected. I liked, his, I liked his work. I kept coming back to him, just building that relationship. And then, you know, uh, after a few years, we still keep in contact. We've done events together and just... A whole lot of things that we've done together and, and you know just want to welcome him again to our podcast here thank you bro thank you i really appreciate you just reaching out and having me over um whatever i can add to your podcast or anything you got for me like let's do this i'm 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 inspired i'm just inspired in the midst of everything that's happening i'm, I'm just inspired right now for sure for sure um so yeah uh so i don't know if you want to call, go by obi or josh um obi obi's cool obi, obi. is my universal all right, for sure. Um, so, Obi, if you could tell us in the podcast a little bit about yourself, your story, where you came from, um, and what got you to the point where you're at in life right now. Uh, well, I'm first-generation American. Uh, my parents immigrated here in 1980. I was born in 81, and uh, we moved to South Central in 86. So I've been born uh, in the, I was born in East L.A., uh, raised in South Central L.A., and I'm still here. Uh, in the 90s, I started having a passion for music, and by my high school years, I started a band, and uh, we got to play all over the place, make music, make people happy, and I've also been around business my whole life because my parents in the early 90s realized that working for yourself was better than working for someone else. So I've always had uh, working for myself roots, uh, um, improving myself, investing in myself, working for myself, uh, and it's paid off, you know, it's paid off, uh, and, and we, we keep going through the struggle, you know, we, we fell forward, you know, so um, I'm a musician, I'm an artist, and I'm also a business owner, and we just, we just keep going every day learning, so that's, that's a little bit of my story, and um, uh, we, have no, we, we have no other choice than to keep moving forward, you know? Right, right. That's good. I yeah. like that's inspirational for sure. Um, but thanks for sharing with that. Now, I have a question for you. Um, at what point in your life did you decide to become a business owner? And why is it important in today's world, especially in what's going on right now, to potentially become a business owner? Uh, I realized I wanted to work for myself back when I was in college. I did a little bit of college uh, at Cal State LA. I was there for about a year and a half, and I got a job in the um, dorm department. Uh, I would uh, pretty much, when someone left the room, I had to go back just like a hotel and make the bed, change stuff around, set it up for people. And so I was cool doing that, and then I was, uh, um, um, you know, getting my check every week. I was, I mean, I don't know, I was probably like 19. You know, I had a little Toyota Tercel and life was good. I didn't have no real big bills or nothing. So I was doing that and going to school, but I just started seeing people's, uh, like the supervisor, just kind of like, I'm better than you. I'm, you know, bossy and like, and I just didn't like the environment of working for someone else, you know, like, like it's cool, but I wasn't willing to take anybody's attitude or, or belittle me just because I was just like, the guy cleaning, and this is in, in college, bro. When I mean, I'm sure the supervisor was maybe two, three years older than me. She was probably like a, like a, gonna graduate already, and um, I didn't like the experience. So that's when I was just like, you know what? I'm gonna work for myself. And 
I've been through a long journey ever since that. I got into financial services. I tried that out for a year uh, when World Financial Group was WMA. Um, and so I just, I did that and I realized, eh, it's not what I want to do. And then um, after that, uh, I've been doing music and then just having my own business, whether it's with my father's company, uh, construction, or my company, printing, graphic design. Uh, I've been doing that. And um, you learn every day, man. I've made so many mistakes. Uh, I've been like, man, what the hell? But you kind of have to go through those things to just get back up stronger. You know, I can say that I probably get back up stronger every year. Like it's, it's never going to go away. There's always going to be a challenge, you know? Right. So that, I mean, anyways, that's how realizing that I want to be my own business owner back in, in college. You know? wow. well, um, my next question would be, um, when you were young, did you ever think you were going to be in the position you are in now? Uh, no. No, because uh, my dream has always been to be a musician and, and, and I've done a lot of traveling and playing the world. But, um, um, you know, we have different situations in life. I mean, I got married and, um, uh, well, even before that, so pretty much all of my 20s to my late 20s, I toured a lot. And when I got married, I was like, man, I can't really tour all the time. I'm going to build a family, so I have to slow down that's when I kind of realized, okay, um, the printing business happened because when I was touring, I would print hundreds of t-shirts and CDs, you know, back people were still buy CDs back in those days, early 2000s, 2005. And so I would pay people to print t-shirts and I would buy t-shirts and do the whole taking it to them. And to one of my buddies, Cesar Montelongo, he was working for, a company out in uh, Ontario printing thousands of like pieces for like companies like Wells Fargo or you know gloves and little handbags. So he was like, "Bro, like we can make money." So we partnered up and we got an investor and we just freaking bought machines for t-shirt printing. And I was like, "Bro, you're gonna handle the the business and I'm I'm in it, but I'm touring right now, so let's work out work it out." So. We did that for some time. Um, I mean, honestly, we weren't taking taking it seriously, you know? I was touring, I was single, didn't have big bills, and he was like, you know, on the party lines, promoting the band and all this stuff. So uh, then things got real, and so, uh, you know, I, I, I stopped touring, and then I got more into the business, and, and then that's when I kind of like, okay, I, I'm not going to work for nobody, so let me really get into this printing business that uh, we have. And that's kind of when I started learning more and got into it full time, you know, just pushing it to make it a reality to, to, to provide, you know, to provide the funding for, for my family and for whatever I want to do, you know. For sure. Yeah. So my next question is, what's your favorite food? My favorite food is Chinese food. I mean, okay. I love Mexican food and Salvadorian. Like, that's like... I, that's like my daily, but if I can pick a favorite food that I can go once in a while, it's Chinese food. And uh, my favorite plate is um, uh, compound chicken, oh. hot, with white rice and a Coke, and we're good, or water. So, mm -hmm. I mean, uh, and next level is Chinese buffet. It's just like, you got everything, you know? And so you I grew, I mean, I... I grew up in the hood, so my Chinese food before was the Hong Kong Express, where they have the food there all day, and that was that was awesome. But um, my father, uh, back in the late '90s, no, 2000-ish, he started working a lot with a lot of Asian uh, contractors, uh -huh. so they would invite us to eat, and that's when I discovered real Chinese restaurants. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? Like the real stuff, and I was like, "What the heck have I been eating in the hood?" So. I try to go to places where it's actually real Japanese and or Chinese and just, you know, I get the, you know, the barbecue places or whatever. Yeah. Uh, but I think that they have their own secret menu because sometimes I go to these places and I see my Asian brothers like with some stuff that I've never seen in my life. And I'm like, man, I wonder how they ask for that one, you know, but for you real? know how it is. Like, like we Latinos, we got our little secrets. Like, 
you know, yeah. hey, we yes. get a taco, yeah. but we're like, hey, tiene salsa roja, you know? Like, we got, we yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. And their place is, they like, you, they, you could see them take it out from, like, at the bottom of the counter, and then they give it to you, salsa and stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, there's a lot of anxiety. There's a lot of news. There's a lot of, like, everybody just yeah. going bananas. We need to counter that with love, you know? Right. We need to be like, hey, man, we're here. You know, I'll pray for you. I'll talk to you. Call me. You right. need something, we can have it delivered. Like, that's what we're supposed to do as humans, just help each other out. So, um, but keep going, definitely. And don't let those, um, I mean, I'm older than you. I've made so many mistakes for listening to those resistance. You know, the, the, those ideas that, oh, it's not going to happen. It's not going to work. And look where I'm at. You know, if I wouldn't have listened to some of those thoughts, I probably would have been more ahead, you know? So people like you that are younger or that are listening to this, if you, got, if you know that deep inside what you're calling is, do it. It no matter, I mean, even if your closest friend, I mean, your friends, your family, if they're not agreeing with that, hey, you know, this, is, this might not be for them, but if you, it's like me. The reason I'm on this is because for many years, I did not go on and speak. For many years, I was like, I'm just Obi, the musician, and all I do is sing. I limited myself, you know? I, I turned down students. I turned down so many speaking engagements back in the days because I was like, that's not me. And it was a lie, you know? Now I know that I'm probably a better speaker and motivator and I can add value to people in speech than in music. And now I can't, I just can't stop. I can't be stopped anymore. So I just want to encourage anybody listening, encourage you to keep doing what you're doing because it's good. It's great and the world needs it now. Right. So. Amen to that. Amen to that, bro. Yeah. <laughs> for sure. Do it. <clears throat> some, some wisdom has been dropped, ladies and gentlemen. Bro, this so. is the time to unite. It's kind of like the world stopped and, it's, and we're being forced to unite right. and to be positive and to like love each other. And, you know, I, I think that it's just not what's happening right now, but it's been leading up to this point. Everything that I've seen the last few months and years, so much hate, so much division. Right. It's just bananas, bro. And um, I try not to stay in that because then you become that. And uh, uh, that's why I always try to share positivity because that's, for example, when the, there's a dark room and the light comes in, there's nothing you can do to go back to darkness. So we have to counter all this hate and negativity and failure right. with positivity, with working hard, echándole ganas, you know? Chandole ganas. So that's what I got to say, bro. Sorry I didn't shave, man. <laughs> uh, good, bro. Uh, I shaved my head, bro. As you can see, I went short this time. Um, but yeah, bro, thanks for that knowledge, for that wisdom. Bro, but just, man, keep going, bro. Keep going, man. We all have a huge potential. We were created uh, by very strong spiritual power, and we have that in us, and we just got to share it to the world. So just be encouraged and, like, <clears throat> I think uh, all will be okay, man. All, yeah. Everything will be. It will all be good. We gonna be alright. Yeah. Be alright. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all man. Right. Well, thanks again, bro. I appreciate you for tuning in. Um, this this is the end of the podcast. This is episode five. So those of you who are tuning in, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, share. I um, mean, just you know, blow this up because this is some value that you got from um, Obi and myself. And uh, we're just here to make spread positivity. And can remember to always continue to spread love, spread kindness, spread happiness, and you know, just make this world a better place. So I appreciate you guys for tuning in. Thank you so much for tuning in and listening and uh, watching. And don't forget to like, like, subscribe, and comment. So thanks so much, Obi, for tuning in. I appreciate you guys. And we'll see you guys in the next episode. Have a good one. Take care. Peace.